winter is officially here and with the temperatures dropping, everyone is wondering how to prepare themselves and their homes for the season. Well, right now, 11 Alive has got you covered with some tips on how you and your family can stay safe and warm for the holidays. An Arctic blast is bringing some of the coldest temperatures we have seen in at least five years in Metro Atlanta. Communities will soon be opening up those warming centers and it's time to prepare to stay weather aware. We have live team coverage for you tonight looking at how you can prepare your home and our chief meteorologist Chris Holcomb is tracking our temperatures. So Chris, when are those temperatures going to begin to fall? Well, we have cold out there right now, but the big cold blast is going to be coming in Thursday night and into Friday and well in advance of this, the National Weather Service is issuing a wind chill watch in effect for Thursday Thursday night and into Saturday morning. It's going to last for a while. Now we're not only going to have the cold air, we're going to have some strong winds of 30 to 40 miles an hour. That will bring the wind chills here in the metro area on Friday morning and into Saturday morning below 10 degrees below zero and then in the mountains it could be 15 below zero to 20 below zero wind chills and so definitely limit time outdoors stay inside and if you're outside cover exposed skin bring the pets inside as well now we also with that may have a flash freeze early on Friday morning what that means is when you have a rapid temperature drop of temperatures going down 20 to 30 degrees in less than six hours that's going to be happening here Thursday night and into Friday with that, if the moisture on the ground, the wet roads don't dry up as fast as the temperatures drop, we could see some patchy areas of black ice around early on Friday morning. We don't think it'd be widespread, mainly on some elevated surfaces. So keep that in mind for early on Friday morning. The wind is really going to help though things to dry out, so we don't think it's going to be widespread. The other thing we're watching is that blast moves in. There will be some moisture with that maybe even a few flurries coming in early on Friday morning, but we're not expecting much in the form of accumulations here. The temperature is dropping very fast, and as it does, you want to make sure you protect three main things, your pipes, your plants, and your pets. Just bundling up, cooking some soup. Oscar Brown is bracing for the temperature drop coming in a matter of hours. We got a generator, so we, we're very prepared. And he's winterized his home. I went through and did the, the weather stripping on all the windows and um, also at the bottom of the doors. Colder air is coming our way. Behind Far the too cold for safety. plants and pets. It's time to bring both inside. Experts say with strong winds coming, you may also want to bring in outdoor items like furniture and other equipment. It's also time to take plumbing precautions. Pipe bursts can be a big nightmare, but it's other things too, like as far as losing hot water. Rashad Patterson with Plumbing to a T says burst pipes can be costly and recommends insulating your pipes with foam that only costs a few dollars. Some people it's like the whole house, but I highly recommend it in a cool area. Like the pipes in the garage or those with outside exposure. Patterson says letting your faucets drip can prevent your pipes from bursting, but it can also cause corrosion, so it should be a last option. If you want someone who's about to go out of town and you know you're going to be gone, I just recommend just turning all the water off to the house. Patterson says it's also important to know where your water shutoff valve is in your house just in case you do have a problem with any of your pipes. And as a reminder, with all the cooking this week and the heaters being kicked into high gear, it's important to make sure your carbon monoxide detectors and your smoke detectors are working properly. Latest forecast from the U.S. Energy Information Administration is that most Americans will pay 28% more this year to stay warm. 11 Alive's Jerry Carnes shows us how a few things you can do to help cut costs. Start by setting your thermostat to 68 degrees or as close to that as you can tolerate. People in the winter say 68 is too cool. Uh, it's really, a, you know, ultimately it's going to be your personal comfort setting, you know, what you can stand based on, you know, what, what it does to the bill. To assure that your heating system is running as efficiently as possible, make sure your vents are not blocked. Move furniture and rugs away from the openings where air is supposed to flow. Have a sofa right up against your return air register, for instance, that could block the airflow, make the unit struggle and have to work harder and that's going to take longer to cool your or heat your home. The same goes for your outside unit. Clear bushes and shrubbery away to maximize airflow. Make sure you clean and replace old filters that are a part of your heating unit. Smart thermostats as well. Many people have smart thermostats. Some of them can actually learn your 
your habits and can adjust the, the settings appropriately you know, through the day or when you're not home. And that's where you're using most of your energy is through that heating and air. The biggest thing is, is make a plan now. Make sure that you have your plan ready ahead of the weather. Georgia Power spokesperson Adrian Tickle says that plan should include your entire family and reaching out to your neighbors too. Building an emergency plan is important for your family. Know where your family is going to be. Know where if you need to check on your neighbors because you have elderly neighbors or neighbors with special needs. You want to make sure you're prepared if your power goes out. We encourage our customers to ensure that they have flashlights and that they have batteries available and backup batteries as well to remain safe anytime that they do have a service interruption. Georgia Power recommends you follow them on social media to get important updates during the storm. Follow us on social media. We can getting information is really important. So making sure that you have ways to get the information. Um, we have we're on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. And one thing that Georgia Power says not to do if your power goes out is to light candles. And they say that's because of the potential fire hazard if you're not watching them. Let's talk a little bit more about how these types of wintry weather form with a look at our atmosphere. Now, imagine the atmosphere like a hamburger. The top buns where the planes fly, the bottom buns where we're standing. If that whole hamburger is cold below 32 degrees, we get snow. Well, on the flip side, if the whole hamburger is above 32 degrees, we get rain. But there's this gray area in between where we have warm air and cold air in different layers of that hamburger. Now, if a melting snowflake falls into warm air and has time to refreeze that in cold air into little balls of ice, we call that sleet. Sleet, they're very small, smaller than Dippin' Dots, and you'll hear little pings on the roof or on your windshield. Now, if that melted snowflake falls into warm air and then a very shallow layer of cold air at the surface, it doesn't have time to refreeze into those balls of ice, so it falls as liquid, then freezes on contact. That is called freezing rain. That causes the coating glazing of ice that can be on anything, tree limbs, power lines, and that is what can cause a huge headache trying to drive on the road. AAA says it's important to make sure your car is ready. That's what we talked about winterizing your car. First, check to make sure you have enough air in your tires. Check the treads as well. Second, your windshield wiper fluid. I filled mine up yesterday in case you need to knock off any debris from the salted roads. Then check your car battery, the belts, the hoses under the hood, and finally get yourself an emergency kit with all the essential items you'll need in case you get stuck. I've got my 11 Alive Christmas blanket they gave us all. And of course, I've got some waters. And and, uh, and remember to fill your tank up with gas. When we have the warm ground that's insulating the roads, that helps to melt any wintry precipitation falling. But when it comes to bridges and overpasses, you see the signs, bridge ices before roads. That's because of a reason. The roads lose their heat more evenly, but bridges, because that colder air can work its way under the bridge and over the bridge, it will cool those bridges and overpasses down first. So that's why we see the icy conditions, the slushy, the slick conditions developing first on those bridges and overpasses. Then we see those roadways developing those slushy and slick conditions. Of course, if you get a better burst of uh, snow or whatever winter weather is falling, any road surface can be.